In the figure below, angle H is congruent, has the same measure as angle F. E, G, and I are collinear together, so these are all on a line with one another. G is the midpoint of F, H. So from G, they're saying this is half of the distance is here and half of the distance is here. Then they're asking us to prove that HI has the same distance, it's congruent to FE. So here the line segment, this distance from H to I, whatever distance that is, is the same distance as the distance between F and E right here. And they're asking us to put each of these five steps in logical order. So this is one of the cha most challenging types of problems that you will receive on the ACT. And I'm going to show you a strategy that will help you get close to the answer, even if you don't understand every step and can't get uh, exactly to the right answer. And we'll go through what we're going to try. We need to understand about proofs that they need to proceed one step at a time. They need to start only with the information that's available in the uh, assumptions in the figure and in the statements that they've made that I've underlined so far and a proof should end with whatever it's trying to prove. So in this case, we're trying to prove that HI is congruent to FE. And this final part is the best clue that we should look for first. We want something that proves exactly that to come at the end of the proof. And here we see step five does that. So here in step five, they say HI is congruent to FE, exactly what we're trying to prove. They give the reason. We actually don't even need to know the reason. We know that the last step of any proof should be the thing it's trying to prove. And this eliminates a lot of possibilities because in B here, the last step is four, but it should be five. In E here, the last step is three and it should be five again. So even if we didn't do anything else, we already have a good guess on this uh, question and we're earning points or likely to earn points even from guessing. All right, so let's talk through some other information that we can get on these. And again, I'm going to kind of try to take us through some shortcuts where we can get closer to the answer even if we don't know the perfect answer. So here they're saying, let's look at the, uh, the different things that are proven. And I've actually gone through these before, so I know which one to focus on first. You'll have to go through each one and turn but here they proved that egf and igh are vertical angles and that was by definition and then in step two they say that egf and igh that's uh e to g to f is right here and i to g to h is right here they say that they must have the same angle because they're vertical angles so we know that step four proved they were vertical angles. And then, so first, the flow of logic is first by definition, they proved that they were vertical angles. And then once they knew that, then they used that to prove step two. And this tells us that four must come before two in our proof because two depends on something we proved in four. And we actually don't even need to know much of the terminology here to understand this. We just need to know that two and four were dealing with the same angles and that four proved they were vertical and two used that fact to prove something else about those angles. Well, this allows us to eliminate two other options. Well, yeah, two other options here. So now we can eliminate A, and we can also eliminate C from our equation. And finally, we're left with the correct answer, D. And that's really all we need to do. Now, to be complete here, I'm going to go ahead and walk through the rest of these steps. I'm going to describe what each one of them means using the, uh, you know, using the, uh, cor the diagram and the correct terminology. But you could stop right now. And if you're really taking the exam, this is a quick way to answer even a really challenging problem like this proof problem. All right, so let's go through uh, 
the the first step here said that line segment HG is congruent to line segment FG. So that's actually uh, what was stated in red here that the midpoints. So this corresponds to the clue that G is the midpoint of FH. That's what it uses. And then it said that if something's the midpoint, those two lengths must be the same. And that was proven. So that's why uh, this is a, can be the first step because it proceeds directly from information that we had in the prompt. Number four proceeds from the definition of vertical angle. So by definition, you didn't even need any information in the prompt except the visual that was there. So no problem. Number four comes, I guess, kind of from the diagram, so to speak, is how we justified number four. And then to get number two, we already showed how number four flows into number two. Prompt three says that now triangle GHI, let's uh, go ahead and highlight this, triangle from G to H to I, and back again, is the exact same triangle as triangle G to F to E, and back again. And they're saying they're proving that because they both share an angle that's the same. Well, one of the angles that they share that's the same is this one we highlighted in orange. So that explains this fact. They also share a side in common. And we proved in step one that HG and FG, which is a side that both of these triangles share, is in common. So this step three also depends on step one here. And finally, they must have another angle in common. And this was in our prompt, that angle H, which is one of the angles in this triangle, and angle F is the same. This comes from our prompt that this final angle is the same. So anyways, we can see that three actually depends on two and on one and on the prompt. But by this point, we already have all those pieces of information. And then finally, we get to step five. And this says that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Well, we just proved in this last step that these two whole triangles were congruent. And now we're using that fact that these triangles are the same, uh, the same exact shape to prove that some part of the triangle, and that's the part we're interested in here, the part labeled L, is also that shape. And so anyways, then we're finally through the proof. Hopefully you're convinced that those are the same angles. But more importantly, hopefully you understand how to take a complex problem like a proof problem and actually break it down to a series of easier problems that you can probably use to score some points even if you can't solve it perfectly.